Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and 2.92 release for Blender is just around the corner. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, blender.org slash download slash LTS. Uh, the LTS is the long-term support. So you can see 2.83 here. And they, ha uh, they have a long-term support plan mapped out, a rough plan here. Right after 2021, you can see that 2.92 is ready to be released, followed shortly after that by 2.93, which is another long-term support release. So you can see about every year they're going to release a new long-term support version. They're not going to actually add any new features. It's just going to be bug fixes. But along with the long-term support, you can see they're still developing Blender. They're still adding new features, which you can test out in the new experimental versions that come out. And you can look at what's coming up in these releases if you go to the wiki, and I'll leave a link to this in the post. But here you can see the older versions, the 2.83, this is the last long-term support. And then the next one will be 2.93 like we saw, but right now um, this is the last stable release as you can see. And then the next one coming out, which is in beta, which is actually, we have a release candidate now because it's very close to being released, is the Blender 2.0. So we are specifically going to look today at the features. So if you come down to more features uh, and then scroll down just the sequencer for now. So this is for all of you who are using Blender as a video editor. And these are the new sexy features of the sequencer, which are really cool. Um, the first one being the coolest right here, the media transform redesign. And this is awesome. Here we can go. This is the if you actually click on this link, it'll take you to this page here. And VSC Media Transform Redesign. I'm not gonna read all of this because I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So we've got 2.83 and then 2.92 release candidate over here. So this is the 2.83.12 version, which is the latest long-term support version. And so what I'm going to do is add in a picture. I'm just going to add this picture in here of this raccoon. You can find this. I don't know if it's on Pixabay. I know it's a public domain, CC0. Um, actually, let me just go find it now. Okay, so here it is. It's at public domain pictures. And if you just search raccoon, you'll find this here. And it says, Jean Beaufort, Be Be Beaufort, Beaufort, Beaufort. Jean Beaufort. <laughs> if that's not French, then it's probably pronounced Jean Beaufort. Uh, or Jean Beaufort has released this raccoon image under the public domain license. So you can go there if you want to check that out. But back to my demo here. Um, this is the new version. So I'm just going to show you real quick the new version. First, of course, we got to come over down here to color management and make sure we change Filmic to standard so that it looks normal. By the way, everything that I'm going to do here uh, can be done with video and uh, obviously this is the video sequence editor but I'm just going to show you with the picture because it's the same exact thing so this is just a still image but if you look over here make sure my bubble head is out of the way over there okay we've got our transform tools all of them left right up and down and our scale options in this video strip or the image strip built in the rotation is built in and then we have mirror options built in too. Now this is significant because in 2.83, we pull it over here and then you can see actually right off the bat, when I put this in here, let me see if I can delete that and just drag that in. You can see, boom, right away, original image aspect ratio. This is so important for a lot of reasons I'm not going to get into this video I'm going to actually do a separate video about the differences between these and the video sequence editor but just on the surface of it you can see that this doesn't pull in right so what you would have to do here is come over here see here's the transform that we have here but we have offset or we can make it offset here but then that's too big for our dimensions so we actually can't use that we have mirror here, but uh, no scale and rotation. So you'd have to come over here and make sure you have your image or video selected. Shift A and add in an effect strip, transform. And then from the transform, make sure you have that selected. Now you have these options here where you have uh, another position, X and Y, a little bit redundant. Uh, here is cool. We have a uniform scale option. That way you can scale it uniformly here like that, and then you have your rotation. But 
In order to get the aspect ratio we want over here, we'd have to do this manually. Um, we'd have to pull this X in like that and then either calculate by using aspect ratio or just kind of, I'm just eyeballing it right now. So something like that. Uh, and of course I forgot to come over here, color management and standard. There we go. So there, so as you can already see, a lot fewer steps over here and a lot less clutter, especially if you have video strips and image strips that are overlapping each other. Um, you don't have this extra transform strip, which is amazing. On top of that, it just plays faster. Look at that. When the transform strip is being calculated with the cache, it just takes quite a bit longer for the initial cache. This one just, whoosh, just plays right away. So that is the first one. Let's go on to the second one. Background rectangle option for text strip. That's pretty cool too. So come back over here. Let's go back to the beginning. By the way, I didn't mention this before. I'm assuming you guys know where to find the video editing. If you come to this plus at the end, the video editing workspace is right here. But I'm going to come over here and add in a text. And same thing over here. Add in a text. And we can see all of our text options over here compared to over here. Now you have the same options over here, but uh, under shadow we actually have box. And if we do same thing up here, let's do this is a raccoon. And I'm probably spelling that wrong, but I don't care at this point. Uh, we got 100. And with this box, you can see it just adds a box under it that you can change the color of to be whatever right away. In 2.83, you'd have to actually add in a separate color strip underneath it. And then you would have to either offset it or crop it or both in order for it to, uh, let's do this, let's crop and then crop the top down here like this. And then, of course, we'd have to come up here and change this cross to alpha over. So like that. And then we could change the color like this. So look at this. We already have our text and our video or our image labeled the way we want it and positioned the way we want it with only two strips. Here we have a total of four already. And we don't have that much going on here. And just think if you have a whole bunch more in your scene just trying to overlay stuff it's just it gets to be a big pain in the neck so this is really helpful kind of logically combining everything together so you don't need as many strips which is awesome okay next one we have add overlay popover panels oh this is pretty cool so this one nope this one add panels with overlay settings for strips and preview and overlay and enable disable button Additional options have been added, strip name, sor strip source, and strip duration. And what this is, is users can now select what info they need to see on the strips. When no text is displayed, waveforms are drawn in full height, which means you can actually come over here, uh, and I don't have an audio. Let's get some music. Okay, open up some music here, and okay, this is what we would normally see. I'm going to go ahead and display the waveform, and you can see we have our title, above and the waveform beneath it but if you come up over here to our overlays we can actually disable all of our overlays which will just show the strip or we can choose disable duration source and name you can see that's so much better for your waveform if you're editing and you don't have that text in the way here and there's no such option in uh, previous versions okay next one go back here and paste strips after playhead by default. Okay, so this is copy and paste here. So paste copy strips after playhead because this is more intuitive. Let me show you what uh, it was here. So if we just, if I had the playhead here and I selected all of them and I copied them, when I put the playhead here and pasted them, it would paste them relative to where the playhead was originally which this could confuse the heck out of you if you didn't know this. For example, um, if we have these, um, let's just hide this for now. If we have these all the way over here, like this, and I just want to select these, and I'm like, okay, I'll copy them, but my playhead is all the way back here, remember. 
And then I just want to paste them right here, right next to this. Paste. Like, what What happened? Where'd they go? Where, where did I paste them? Oh, well, they're way over here. Because, again, they were in reference to the playhead. So here, um, I think we can get rid of this one. Let me that right there. Here, we can copy these no matter where the playhead is. So copy and then paste. It will paste it right away here. Now we have the option to keep the offset, which acts like the previous style, um, but by default it pastes it wherever you put your playhead, which is a lot more intuitive. So um, copy that, and then let's say let's say this is here. Copy and then move that here. Paste. Now keep offset. Of course, it's going to be where the playhead was originally. So yeah, I like the, the fact that they kept this just in case you are f uh, more used to the old style. Um, but for new users, it's more intuitive this way. Okay, what's next? Move, remove, gaps. I don't know if that's a typo. Move, remove, gaps. Oh, no, no, no. The remove gaps operator. Okay, move the remove gaps operator logic to module code. Okay, so this one mostly is code based and I don't really know it. So the logic was updated, making it more logical, I guess. Uh, but uh, there is one thing, calculate gap from start frame. Previously gap was considered only in between strips. So that is cool because what you would have to do, see right here, if I come to the beginning and let's select everything and just move these. If I removed my gaps by pressing backspace, um, then it would just do it in between the strips. It wouldn't then remove this huge gap here. You'd have to first take these and then snap them, shift S, um, and then of course this is a transform strip, so you'd have to press G momentarily and then right click to cancel. A little bit tedious again. And then you'd have to backspace. Now all of that, if you're trying to edit a video and you're on a deadline, it's very difficult when you have all of this stuff that you have to do just for a very simple task. So here we have now our simple scene. And then if we go back to the beginning and we just backspace, it starts from wherever the first gap is. Doesn't matter if it's the start frame or not. It doesn't matter if it's in between the strips. It will remove the gap wherever the gaps are. Much easier, much faster. You can see this already took us a fraction of the time to do rather than here. So I'm really looking forward to this 2.92 release. Uh, it's going to really speed up your video editing workflow, I think. Okay, and then the last one here, hide cache settings and adjust defaults adjust the default cache settings to all for all files to store raw and final images um, they just change the defaults all settings are still available when the developer extra options is enabled and you can already see that here um, when i press play uh, when i press play over here you can see the cache is automatically coming in there um, you don't see that over here but there is no cache option in fact it's not even over here uh, we have proxy options. If we select one of our strips here, we have these. Um, now they did change this, it looks like. This used to be in the developer options. In an earlier version of 2.92, this proxy one wasn't here. You have to enable the developer ones, unless I've already enabled those. Well, either way, you come over here to edit preferences. Uh, up to interface and then check developer extras and then you can see this cache down here uh, Again, I think the proxy originally was also with those developer extras But I'm glad that they changed that because uh, I think a lot of people use the proxies I certainly do and I need to make a video about that by the way So that is it for the sequencer, but uh, those are really awesome updates um, just going to really speed up your workflow. Uh, you've got some motion tracking ones that are pretty cool. Uh, they've kind of just reorganized it and simplified it a little bit. Uh, and then also huge speed up of tracking multiple objects at the same time. Or sorry, multiple tracks at the same time. Uh, they added for the compositor a new compositor node. It's uh, to adjust the exposure of images rather than going to, you know, we were going to um, the exposure down here. And under color management, you can exchange, you can change the exposure here. But I guess they have a new. I just want to check that out. Actually, let's go to compositing. 
uh, use nodes and I'm just curious search exposure all right look at that can change your exposure of course we don't have anything in here let's let's add in our raccoon image here and hook that up why can't I see that oh I need a view there we go <laughs> viewer node and all right so our exposure look at that pretty cool all right, but anyway, so that is it for this video. Just wanted to go over some of the upcoming features of 2.92. It's in beta. It's, we got the release candidate out. The full release will be out very soon. So stay tuned and happy editing.